Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joseph Rickert from our studio, and I am a director of the ARC Consortium, and I'm here with David Smith, my fellow director from Microsoft, who's also a director of the ARC Consortium. Afternoon. And what we'd like to do is, is um, give you some idea about the ARC Consortium and, and why, why we exist. So um, first off, in simplest terms, the ARC Consortium is a um, group of business enterprises and philanthropic enterprises who have an interest in ensuring that the R language and the R community thrive for uh, the long term. Um, so the consortium uh, is the vehicle for the participation of businesses in the R community. Uh, the way I think about it is that to have a community like the R community, there are three necessary conditions. You have to have people who self-identify as part of the community, people who interact um, frequently, and there has to be a way for people to contribute to the community. So the R consortium is a way for businesses to contribute to the community. And um, right now, what we have here is a list of the members, um, and what you see are the founding members, our studio, and Microsoft, and then on the end there, you see the addition this year of the Moore Foundation, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, which I believe is a significant development because it shows that uh, a well-established um, philanthropic uh, grant-giving organization who's interested in, the, um, in promoting science and technology in the United States has you know, recognized that R is a, um, a key contributor and enabler for the scientific community. And on the bottom here, you see some uh, organizations that, um, that are not directly making their business um, around the R language like Google, for instance, or um, you have here this, this little mountain there is Ketchum uh, Trading, which is a hedge fund in Chicago. These are smaller organizations who recognize that they have a significant dependence on the R uh, language, and they want to become members of the community. So, so here we have a way for, um, for businesses and or other organizations to become a member. And we see ourselves as the link here. So the possibilities are that we could be the place that bind these, you know, the community, which is at the people level, uh, industry, which is a category above, collections of people, the R Foundation, which is, of course, um, uh, an organization made up of people who are also individuals. So this is, this is how we solve the uh, we see ourselves as a link. Now, there, there are two major uh, ways that we provide, uh, well, we provide energy and money. So the energy part uh, is exemplified by this, um, this slide here. We have the concept of working groups. And if, you're, if you've ever worked in a standards organization like the IEEE or, you know, uh, other trade organizations, you can see that there's lots of opinions about how things should be done, right? And it's very important before you do anything to try to achieve consensus, perhaps get some funding to work out initial prototypes. And that's what the R Consortium Working Group is for. So you see we have some, some already underway. Um, um, and this, this uh, graphic on the right here is, um, that's the, the reference architecture for the distributed computing working group. Now what they're working on is to try to figure out if there is a, a single interface layer that say could be built um, that would be the proper way for people to write, uh, write to if they were interested in using different distributed computing backend. So it's not an obvious uh, solution. And, and they're working at it. Um, we see ourselves as a catalyst. And we're delightful to see the success that Our Ladies um, um, is having. We, um, 
we funded uh, Our Ladies um, in, during the last round last year, j just a small amount of money, and we certainly can't take any kind of credit for the success, but this is a slide that they presented to us when we, we went through the exercise of seeing how our investments were, uh, were turning out. And, and we're just delighted to see how much um, progress they've made and continue to make. And it's an example of sometimes, you know, you have something that's working at one level and then maybe a little bit of money or, or attention in this case, I think maybe just attention, and, and it works wonders. Um, a place where people can come together. So we mostly um, fund what we call infrastructure projects. Um, uh, but we have an extended idea of infrastructure and, and getting people, you know, small conferences and, and, and ways for people to meet are also part of our mission. Um, we, we're interested really in complicated projects. So when we go out for a call for papers, what we like to see are proposals from, from groups or individuals or groups of individuals who were willing to take under, undertake something that will benefit a large portion of the art community and something big enough that it needs organizational help. So, and, then, um, and then we're the resource for the heavy lifting. So the R Hub project, um, which many of you have probably seen a tutorial on yesterday, was the kind of motivating project for the, uh, the R Consortium. What happens? when you need to begin to put together the infrastructure for a modern-day build system that will last through the 21st century. This is, um, this is what it takes to be on the um, consortium, and it shows, uh, it shows the commitment that these uh, companies have made. So to be a platinum member, that's 100K dues per year. A, a gold member, which is underneath that, uh, is 50k and the silver member is um, 25k for organizations that are over a hundred people. What I'd like to see is the growth in the consortium with lots of smaller members um, contributing because we're all stronger when people become involved. So there's there's two major committees. You can see that it's the board of directors that, that we're on and, and that's involved with strategic decisions and, and, you know, how much money we have to spend. The Infrastructure Steering Committee is the, the group that actually decides what projects get funded and they issue the call for papers and what have you. And this is, um, this is a list of the active projects, uh, you know, that are going now. Uh, you see, I'm up there on the board because I run the our, uh, user group support program. So if you're organizing a user group, there is some money to be had depending on the size of the group. So please look at the R Consortium webpage and, um, and write to us and tell us about your group. And you see the, the grants range from small grants, uh, you know, in the $5,000 range to the R Hub is a significant project, so we're, we're, we're prepared to undertake a, you know, real infrastructure, but our mission is to spread the, um, spread the money around. This is money that comes to us in dues. Right now, we're up to getting close to having handled, handed out half a million dollars, and we're pretty efficient. I, I think the last I looked, uh, our efficiency ratio is about 70%. And we'd, we'd like to even do better than that. So uh, our, that's the money comes in from the companies. They have an interest in fostering the community, the foundation, and the language. And we're trying to hand it back intelligently to people who, who have real contributions to make. So David. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I wanted to, to jump in at this point. Um, if I turn it that way, it'll go forwards. Um, I wanted to jump at this point and just give a little perspective from the point of view of Microsoft. And why, why did Microsoft become a member uh, of the R Consortium? And it has to do with, with what I said, if you saw so my, my talk this morning, is that the, the value of software, including R, lies not just in its technical capability, but also in the ecosystem that forms around it. And Microsoft 
has a lot of interest in our having a thriving ecosystem around it. You know, Microsoft is a, is a fine and noble company, but it doesn't do things out, the good, out of the goodness of its heart, should it have one. Um, Microsoft is very selfishly investing in the R Consortium to foster the growth and success um, of the R community in its technical capabilities. To give you one very specific example, Microsoft has a very vested interest in R being able to access databases very well. And there is a DBI project that was funded by the R Consortium in order to unify the way that R connects in with databases, which is very much in Microsoft's interests. It's also important from a talent perspective, uh, both we at Microsoft and our customers and partners that are working with R need to be able to hire people. And by investing in the R Consortium and being public about that, that helps us with that, our recruitment goals. Also around the vendor network, you know, being able to work with the other vendors in the space, you know, like our studio, like Tibco, like everybody else, um, and have just unified discussions about how R is working in the commercial environment is very, very important to us at Microsoft. So from our perspective, we get very good value out of that $100,000 a year that we invest in the R Consortium, which in turn gets invested into the broader ecosystem as Joe just described. Just to give some summaries about the R Consortium, since it's uh, been running for a couple of years now, uh, we currently do have 13 members, uh, four of which are that top level uh, platinum member, actually, rather than gold is listed there. Um, we would love to have more. Um, so if you are working at an organization which is doing a lot with R, um, please do um, talk to your leadership about potentially becoming a member of the R Consortium and in turn contributing to the ecosystem in the ways that I just described. Um, but the thing that you know, I think I'm most personally proud of as a founding member, member, and I'm sure the other members are as well, is the projects uh, that the members of the community have been able, able to undertake um, through the R Consortium sponsorship and, and, uh, and the, not just the projects, but also the working groups and the social organizations that Joe mentioned as well. Another thing that I think is really, really important that the R Consortium has achieved is to open up a conduit uh, between the vendor community that is working with Microsoft and directly with the leadership of the R Foundation. Uh, one of the, the ways the governance structure uh, of the R Consortium is designed is that the R Foundation automatically has a seat on the board, uh, participates in the board meetings, participates in the, in the discussion, and that has really improved the communication back and forth between the vendor community and uh, the R core group. Right now, Robert Gentleman is representing our, the R Foundation on the board of the uh, R Consortium. And you know, in general, it's just providing a secure, long-term foundation for R as a whole, R as an ecosystem, from these, vend um, these vested interests of the vendors that are working around R. So what's coming up? Um, one of the projects that the um, R Consortium is investing in right now and undertaking is a general survey of the R community. This is a, uh, essentially an academic survey. It's been designed, we spent a, a working group spent about three months designing this survey. It's only recently been launched, uh, but we would love to hear from you and any member uh, of the R community broadly that might be watching online or anybody who is using R um, to provide information about what you think about the past, present, and future uh, of the R project. Um, there'll be a link at the end of the presentation, but please do uh, visit the R Consortium blog uh, or the R Consortium Twitter handle uh, to see a link to that survey. Um, there are also a number of new projects that have, have been already been funded and are kicking off soon. If you'd like to read about those new projects, that's on the R Consortium blog at the link there. And if you have been inspired by projects that you or, or you and some colleagues might wish to undertake, uh, there will be a new round of proposals being announced later on this year. Uh, where you can make an application and apply for funding in the same way we saw. So just in general, to wrap up, um, the R Consortium is there to promote the growth and development of R as a leading platform um, for data science, uh, to provide support directly to the R Foundation through that connection I mentioned a moment ago, to fund projects that are supporting the R project and the R community, and foster the growth of that R community. And then from the point of view of the vendors, to help enable the use of R in commercial environments and foster collaboration between those companies that are using R in that commercial sector. So 
uh, as I mentioned earlier on, um, help us to help you be part of that community. Uh, please uh, talk to your company about potentially becoming a member. Think about projects and submit them to the R Consortium uh, when the new round comes out shortly. Have a look at the existing projects that are currently underway, and if you'd like to chip in and help with those, please do. And follow us and spread the word on Twitter and at the blog. Thank you very much.